Corel Photo Paint is an image editing application that enables you to retouch and enhance photos, as well as create original bitmap illustrations and paintings. In this video, I'll give a tour of the workspace and demonstrate some basic features. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial. When you first open PhotoPaint, you're brought to the Welcome screen. The Get Started tab shows recent documents and enables you to create a new document or open an existing document. There are also some pre-made images on which you can try or discover popular features. At the bottom are links to special offers, user forums, documentation, and support. The second tab is Workspace. You can choose to work in the standard default workspace, which I'll be using, or Touch for those who work with touch-enabled devices, or Specialty for those accustomed to Photoshop. If you're just getting started, the Light workspace has a limited number of tools, which makes it easier to explore the tools you'll use often. I'll stick with default. The What's New tab helps you keep up with updates, Learning links to a wide range of tutorials, and Get More helps you find additional content such as plugins or fonts. You can filter the list to find the content you want, filter to see all of the free content, and open My Library to see the content you've already installed. I'll go back to the Get Started tab. To open a photo, I can use File Open or click the Open Document button. This creates, in a new tab, a document with the photo's original dimensions. I can choose View Rulers to see the photo size. Back in the Welcome screen, there's also an option called New from Clipboard, which creates a new document that contains whatever is in your copy buffer. In other words, whatever you've copied or cut from another application. Or to create an empty document, I'll click New Document. For a new image, there are a number of color presets, as well as all of the standard document sizes. I can also enter a custom size, change the orientation, and set my resolution. The new image takes up the entire workspace, but I can use my mouse scroll wheel to zoom out. To add a photo to this document, I'll use File Import and drag opposite corners. Because the Pick tool is active by default, I can move the photo around or drag nodes to resize. Now let's take a tour of the standard default workspace. The toolbar across the top is the set of standard tools that always appears, such as New, Open, Save, Print, Zoom Level, Show Rulers, Options, and the Launch icon that opens other Corel programs. The toolbar down the left side is the toolbox, containing all of the drawing and editing tools. A small arrow on a tool icon means that the tool is part of a tool group, and clicking on the arrow opens the group. Just below the standard toolbar is the interactive property bar, which varies for each toolbox tool. For example, if I'm creating a rectangle, the icons change to include options for fill, outline, corners, etc. I can click the plus sign to remove any icons, or click Customize to find new icons to add. For any tools that use color, the color palette down the right side can be used to easily choose colors. For a rectangle, I can left-click to set fill color, and right-click to set outline color. The status bar at the lower left corner is where I can look for hints about using the tool. Once I use a color, it's added to the image palette just above the status bar. When I activate the text tool, the property bar has icons for font, size, alignment, spacing, etc. I'll left-click a color to set the font color. The status bar for this tool lets me know that I can click inside text to change it. Also on the right side are the dockers, separate windows that contain categories of tools and features. For example, the Objects Docker lists all objects in the document, and the Text Docker displays properties for the selected text, which I can change. I can open dockers with the Window Dockers menu, or click the plus sign below the current docker tabs. Finally, if I'm working on a large photo or at a large zoom, I can click and hold the navigation icon to pan to the spot in the document I want to work on. This brings us to the end of this introduction to Photo Paint. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy 
of this tutorial.